Alors, je souhaite la bienvenue à notre prochaine représentante, soit Mme Massad. Je vous rappelle que vous disposez de 10 minutes pour votre exposé, puis nous procéderons ensuite à la période d'échange avec les membres de la Commission. Euh, je vous invite donc à vous présenter et à procéder à l'exposé. Euh, je me permets de souligner euh, aux collègues si y a, euh, ça se peut qu'en fait, on met à votre disposition euh, euh, l'interprétation. Donc, euh, madame aussi, euh, sachez que c'est à votre disposition si vous euh, souhaitez en bénéficier. Très Merci. bien. Alors, voilà, vous, déposez de, vous disposez de 10 minutes. Merci, madame la présidente. Mesdames et messieurs les députés, mon nom est Rhonda Massad. Je suis fondatrice de la West Island Blog, un journal en ligne euh, qui célèbre plus de 12 millions de visites dans les dernières cinq années. As a freelance journalist, I have contributed to such uh, news agents as The Suburban, The Gazette, Global News Montreal. During the flood of 2017, I reported live from the site for CBC National News. Je siège au Conseil de refuge d'urgence pour jeunes Ricochet et je suis cofondatrice de Neighbors for Neighbors Food Drive. Je suis ambassadrice auprès de la fondation de l'hôpital Lakeshore de l'Ouest de l'Île et du refuge pour femmes de l'Ouest de l'Île. Je suis éditrice et chef de le Westmount Neighbors Magazine. While community news is in transition, it is also on the rise. People need to connect to feel soothed in a time when national and international news is not only disappointing, but very scary. A sense of helplessness with regards to the world's events has, re has readers reaching for local news sources more than ever. Local news provides positive feedback in their world they live in, in a world that, that they can impact themselves. Les agences de nouvelles en ligne réunissent les communautés. I'll be putting these slides up periodically. You'll see my reach. You can see here that in one week, this last week, we reached uh, 136,000 people in the week and 41,000 people engaged in my content. So they spoke to me, they liked the page, they asked a question. So that's 41,000 people in one week and 107,000 people this month. The reason our readership has grown exponentially is because we strive to deliver an ethical in, news in an ethical way with timely facts and nonpartisan reporting. The West Island community trusts our team to deliver ethic, ethically curated news. There is a high demand for local news. We soft launched both Le Montreal and Laval recently and it's doing well. Um, we hope to unite the communities in those areas as well like we have on the West Island. The confidence people have in our reporting is spreading and the demand is there. We report um, in the area of the West Island. Because the West Island blog team lives in the community, we see and understand the history and the news in its context. We're not strangers when we're reporting the news. We are actually reporting the news that you know. We're there with you, and we feel the news so it's not out of context. It is the first time in history that people can know their reporters as much as they know the topics of discussion. Viewers can choose who they align with both ethically and journalistically. The rep my particular blog that we're talking about today represents the green portion. We represent 234,000 residents in a concentrated area, but we do bleed out. And I do have uh, Google Analytics that show people, not expats that follow us from Europe that have moved away and so on. Many videos are shot uh, in both official languages, en français et en anglais. Our objective is to cover local and regional news. The mission is to provide everyone the right to receive local information. We cover events at John Abbott, our local CGEP, and CGEP Jean Godet that was built with a mission to preserve the French culture. Our goal is to have the trust and of this very diverse community with all its various languages and cultures. News Today is interactive. With the rise of traffic on social media where articles are posted and shared, comments are quick and easy to post. Updates can be made instantly, so articles are never dry and out of date. We update them as news occurs. If there's an accident on the highway, we announce that. And further during the day, I have four volunteers that work with me. They, we will all be updating that, site, that, that information as the day goes along. Aujourd'hui, un aspect crucial des nouvelles locales en ligne est la touche personnelle offerte par les différentes médias. Grâce à l'aspect interactif du web, mes abonnés me connaissent et je les connais. Il me voit en, à mon meilleur en tenue de gala et me voit prête à remplir des sacs de sable lors de l'inondation. 
Ce lien de proximité n'aura jamais été possible auparavant pour toutes sortes de lo nouvelles locales. New shoppers know they can get national and international news from the larger outlets. When it comes to local community-driven news, they are checking with a team they have met. They know us. You can see here the, the social impact of this particular slide. We are showing the, this broad light, this broadcast shows the mats for the homeless. There's a church in our area that is asking for bags. So it's an environmentally sound initiative. They're making mats for the homeless. So people that sleep on the streets, ceux qui restent dans la rue, ont un matelas fait par cette église. Les femmes dans cette église qui, qui vraiment, ils tissent le, le matelas même. Alors on a reçu plus de 100 partages et plus de 11 millions de personnes, euh, 11 à 1000 personnes ont vu cette poste. Puis on aura beaucoup de sacs pour ces femmes-là. Uh, ça, une autre, uh, we changed lives by being able to reach out for help from the community during the flood and a search for a missing teen. You can also see here we reached 98,000 people in three days. It's an important aspect of what we do. More than 2,000 people shared this post. There was a missing teenager. It took four or five days, but this teenager was found, and I'm quite certain I'm not the only one that shared it, but with all of us together, we certainly made an impact on how to find her. We can also poll instantly. As an example, we recently polled an audience asking them what questions they would like us to ask and what their concerns are for the federal election. We had 298 comments to sift through to figure out our interview questions moving forward. I don't just ask questions that I'm interested in. I need to know what my readership wants and needs. So we poll them first, then our upcoming interviews will make sense to them. Trust is a major factor in connecting with the community. News must be relevant and factual. I can assure you that if I make a mistake, I'm guessing much like yourselves, we will be called out. It doesn't take more than a second. So there are no errors allowed. During the first flood of 2017, the readers came to help me. I opened up a, a location for a food drive, and people could see that I couldn't manage the blog and the food drive simultaneously. They themselves came and walked up and said, give me your computer, we're going to help you. They feel this blog belongs to them. They're very much engaged in what I do. And what now we have four volunteers, like I said, it's people are coming to help me because they believe in, the, in this as well. The West Island blog has an impact by helping people in the community, from an on-site coverage to the recent flood, to the celebration of the Cancer Wellness Centre, to being instrumental in getting much-needed drugs to the youth in need. We are not just a place to get news. WIB is a resource that people seek out in a crisis to know what is happening and how to reach resources in, the, in their community. You can see here, um, oops, I missed one. Where did my, okay. So I'm going to show you uh, the very first experience I had with the West Island blog during the 2017 flood. I was on the ground, and people called me from the location in Il Bazar and said, we are not seen. We have no way of communicating with the government. Can you please come here and show, maybe help us show the right people the right information? And this is what uh, it looked like for me. How do I do that? Authorize. What do I do? I'll try that. At home, I just press every button until something happens. <laughs> That's all. That's how I do it. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll let you find the, find the video. I tried to find it. If you go back to my slides. Okay, the business model, uh, we, we saw 569,000 people this month of April in, uh, in this, this flood. The flood for the... Oh. The, um, what we're trying to show you is a, is a 2017 video, but the 2019 vid uh, information is we received 569,000 people watched videos during the flood. And they watched what the city gave us as well. Both the cities that were impacted, in fact, all three were communicating to me and we were, we were doing live videos so that the city officials could in fact reach their residents a la minute. So they knew where to go, where, what, don't everybody run to the same location. In 2017, we refunneled the traffic away from the site. It was a very important part of what happened and it saved a lot of energy and time and traffic. Of course, it's not going to happen. There we go. Okay, there's me. There I am. Okay. 
I'm in a canoe in this video. Can you hear that? I'm in a canoe. There's a gentleman bringing home his groceries, and I'm in a canoe that uh, is taking me through the streets. Okay, somebody's got to get me back to my slides. Okay, so our social impact is quite quite relevant, and it's become. Uh, there we go. Okay, I want to also point out that we uh, that we did reach 500,000 people in our videos during the 2019 flood. It was uh, it was the place to go to look for what you needed during that time. Um, I wanted to point out that we wanted to introduce you to Dario. He is our youth. Right now, the blog has become so entrenched in the community that um, the youth have reached out to me. Can we get your, can we do some work for you? Can we get some experience journalistically? And we have been very, very well uh, received with that. The community loves to see their youth participating. Uh, a freelance uh, Freelance news reports range from $35 to $100. That's what people get paid. If you're wondering why investigative journalism is at a lack or why people don't show up when you call them to, to do a press conference, it's because it's $35 and it's more expensive to put the gas on that. So take your taxes from that. You're not walking home with a lot of money. En 2019, à Montréal, un reporter euh, pégiste peut être payé entre 40 et 100 dollars par article au niveau local. Dans cette échelle de prix, il y a peu de place pour l'enquête. La qualité de nouvelles est dictée à la fois par le prix et par besoin de livraison rapide. Les médias auront de plus en plus de difficultés à embaucher les journalistes et à tirer le meilleur de leurs capacités et assurer les informations est vraie. Les nouvelles continuent à d'être superficiel, ce qui entoure et nuit au système démocratique. A lack of subsidy threatens our quality of reporting. I do not believe government involvement would compromise this mission if we use CBC as an example of a news agent. Uh, here are some costs that it costs in the new world of, of, uh, of online reporting. Translation is $150 for a 600-word article. Tech support is $80 an hour, SEO management is $100 an hour, and so on. You can see that. So you reached out to, to me, uh, to me, to people, to, to find out what was the future of media. This is the future of media. This is what it looks like locally speaking. I can't speak to national or international. Subsidies would be great. Tax credits, even on translation, would be great. Redefining journalism. Um, I would love to see some regulation for social media. Uh, there has to be some way of, of qualifying us as journalism, uh, journalistic uh, people and uh, the actual pathways that are being delivered. Facebook and LinkedIn are in charge of our media and the delivery. So it's time to recognize and include online sources and make them part of the conversation. Thank you. And oh, oh this is my, my special slide for oh, you yeah. guys. There, there you are. There you are. Merci. And, uh, Dernière photo bien diversifiée. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Madame, merci. Euh, merci, Madame Massad. Alors, euh, merci pour votre exposé. Désolée pour la le, 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 le technique là, qui a été oh, un, pas grave. Un, un petit peu plus compliqué, mais on vous a loué là, le temps là, pour merci vous permettre de, de terminer votre, votre exposé. Et maintenant, dans la période d'échange, je vais céder la parole au député de Sainte-Rose. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Welcome, Rhonda. Thank you. Um, I have a few questions, um, specifically about your business model. Okay. Um, if you can just give me a sense of um, of what it is, how, what it's like. Um, for instance, are you uh, full-time staff yourself? Are you, uh, do you operate only with volunteers? Can you give me a sense? Because it seems to me that you do very well considering the current media climate. So I think understanding your business case a little bit better, your, your business plan or your business profile a little bit better would help us in these proceedings. Okay, I'm going to tell you what happens to me because this was a passion project. I started to do this to unite the community, so it was a volunteer initiative on my part. 
I was filling a personal void to help the community. That being said, over time, uh, many businesses in the community would like to be highlighted, so there is space for ad revenue. I do some of that. My passion lies in the reporting, so I neglect my sales. If I had a sales force of my own, um, which is costly, I would. Ha there's room for much more revenue than I have. Um, we could do Google AdWords, we could do, but like the gentleman before, it's, it's a minimal amount of money, but ad revenue is the way to go. Video vlogging is the way to go. I'd like to introduce the businesses to the community. So there is more money to make, but I'm one person. Full-time is an underestimated word that you could use for me. I have my readers actually concerned. Are you overdoing it? No, I'm good. But uh, we have four volunteers that jumped on, on board this summer. So that helps. It would help to have a writer and a full-time reporter because all of us are managing our daily lives and helping, but there is room for growth in this business and it would be absolutely amazing to have a student from every jurisdiction uh, reporting for us. It would be great and giving them experience and letting them get to know th how I, the business works. I have, I think your model is, I, I, I agree with you, I think that what you are doing sort of, it looks a little bit like the future. Uh, I have a concern though, because the scalability of that future, the viability of the information and the quality of the information. Um, can you give me a sense of your abilities, uh, not personally, but you know, structurally within your organization as to the quality control that goes into your media uh, output, the, 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 ver the journalistic standards that you have, uh, so that, you know, maybe this commission could say, maybe this is the way to go forward because the quality and the, the, the standards are there. The quality and the standards are there are going, to, are going to be driven by the person at the company itself. We trust certain news outlets in, in, in traditional news as well. They, I don't believe you would survive if your ethics were out of line. I think you would last probably a very short period of time because, like I said, if we, if we mess up our facts, we are told, and I can tell you that if I mess up my facts too much, I won't have any listeners. So I think that the actual ethics and the actual journalistic standard will be elevated by virtue of the actual interaction we have. You don't, it's not like I got my paper on the Wednesday and then maybe there's an error and it comes out next week. The errors are called out within seconds. So as far as quality of, of workmanship, even the, even the people that we're interviewing will tell us that's not right. From my perspective, my ethics lie in fact, factual reporting, and I make sure that we have both sides of every coin. C'est les deux bords qui, qui doivent être uh, entendus à chaque fois. And the, the local community aspect of, you know, the, the truly grassroots of, of what you do is, is very appealing. I'm wondering if, if we decided that we wanted to, to help you, if the, if the government decided that it wanted to help people like you, how could we do it, considering you're not, unless you are, a recognized media outlet? Uh, you know, what form, what can we anchor that help in, uh, in terms of getting you the help that you would need if we decided that your model was a way, that was one that we wanted to support? You could help me by giving me business. You could, there are two cities that already use my site to announce things. If there's a specific event or whatever, maybe that would be a way to legitimately help and not just hand out dollars. Mind you, like grants and stuff are, are obviously welcome, but if, if you advertise with us, then then the, the, it, it gives us credibility. It also gives the, the the reader a chance to know that we're we're well backed, we're supported by the community and the government in our community. So I think that would be a, a simple way. Tax credits are another way. Uh, translation. It's it, to have your site in both languages is a really rough thing to do. It's a very expensive thing to do. So that would be a way to help us. Tech support, SEO management costs me $1,000 a month. And if I don't have SEO management, I have errors, which means I don't qualify, which I have a body of, of people to deal with, but I have Google to deal with. I have a lot to contend with in terms of tech support. Tech support would be something else. That would be somewhere a subsidy would, I would relish. What, what you're saying is interesting because we've had a lot of different groups come in here and tell us that the advertising model um, it is, at least in my eyes, it seems to be a dying model. Um, and here you are telling me that your business model rests on revenue from advertisers and the best way we can help you is just to, to give you uh, what the government used to or should be doing in terms of the, the, 
the amount of public notices and whatnot. Yes. So. Because that's ads for me. What, what would you say to those people who are saying that really the advertising dollars aren't there anymore because of, of, of these giant uh, GAFA players and that it's not viable going forward? I think it also depends on how much you're, you're looking to make uh, in terms of revenues. Like, I can definitely subsist if I had somebody else selling besides me, because when I sell, I'm not writing, so and I prefer to write. But uh, I think if, we ha if I had a salesperson or an extra person in my, in my company, definitely it would help. Um, it's not the revenues that you're thinking, uh, you know, let's say, for an example, an article in a newspaper or an ad in a newspaper costs three to $400 a week. We're talking about three to $400 a month. So it's a different scale. So does it work for me? Could I support four people on this business and have a family? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's no way. But there is room to grow and there are branches. And at the end of the day, how else are we going to get our news? So, so what you're saying is very important because viability becomes a question. Your model is very interesting. But I mean, if people can't eat in this model, then what other than just giving you ads, is there anything else that you would think would be useful? Um, the tech support would provide revenue by virtue of having more. The, the stronger I get, the more revenues I can get. I would get not necessarily my local advertisers. I would be able to charge a little bit more and get a bigger company, like a mobile company or, or IKEA or something like that. Like I'm, I'm very, very local. But as my numbers grow, with tech support, it's all one big thing. Tech support would grant me more revenues because I would be properly supported. A custom website, which I can't afford, would be a way to garner more. I could get revenues from other people. So when we met with the Suburban, they mentioned um, a government program that exists to help uh, media outlets transition from, from paper to uh, the digital era. Things like that would be things that you, would, you could benefit from provided but since I'm not of. transitioning I don't qualify nobody will help me and because I'm not transitioning from paper to online I can't get the subsidies to be online uh, to be in paper I can't produce a paper and I can't get the help from the government because I don't qualify because I don't have paper you're, I'm, you're not helping me transition my business it is my business mm -hmm. so that's where we're left out here in the cold a little bit I gotta say thank you c'est tout pour moi, Madame la Présidente. Très bien. Alors, je cède la parole au député de Saint-Jérôme. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Mon collègue, le député de Sainte-Rose, a posé quelques questions que j'avais en tête. Dans le fond, euh, merci de venir nous rencontrer parce qu'avec vous, on explore un petit peu euh, la limite de ce qui serait possible de faire jusqu'où, par exemple, une aide publique euh, devrait s'étendre, en quelque sorte. Et euh, je trouve votre modèle très intéressant. Le succès que vous avez à l'intérieur de votre communauté est remarquable. Euh, et en même temps, j'ai envie de vous poser la question un peu euh, effrontée, si vous me permettez. <rire> euh, si un programme gouvernemental vous venait en aide, qu'est-ce qui, finalement, euh, qu'est-ce qui empêcherait un peu n'importe qui, d'ouvrir un blog citoyen puis de dire euh, on, a un, on répond à un besoin dans notre communauté. Vous-même, vous avez un, un background en journalisme, mm -hmm. euh, mais qu'est-ce qui empêcherait finalement que d'autres médias apparaissent et réclament aussi un traitement équitable en ayant accès euh, au même programme auquel vous, vous auriez accès si c'était le cas? Il n'y a rien à empêcher un autre organisme à faire la même chose. Mm -hmm. C'est ça la question. Et oui. pour recevoir, il n'y a rien, mais c'est comme n'importe quelle euh, affaire. Mm -hmm. Si on est... Premièrement, l'Internet est assez grand pour tout le monde. C'est ça mon, mon perception. Je, je, moi, je, quand je travaille, je travaille avec des, des blinders. Il n'y a pas, pas d'autres personnes, il n'y a pas d'autre euh, euh, journal, il n'y a rien d'autre. Alors, dans mon... Tout le monde peut faire ce que je fais. C'est le public même. C'est différent que les journaux à ancien temps. C'est nouveau à, dans le sens que le, le citoyen même est capable de réagir instantanément de mes, euh, sur mes postes. 
-hmm. Alors, ça, si je suis bon, je, ça va être correct. Mm -hmm. Si, si, je suis, si ma, mes, mes informations sont est, est, est mauvaises, ça ne marchera pas. C'est à moi d'assurer de, de, de que mon business est, est effectueux. Combien de temps? Ah. <laughs> ouais. Alors, je, je vais me permettre une autre question. Uh, in the sense, if we can, of, if we rely on clicks and uh, interaction to, to judge the validity, uh, the program, the aid, the public aid program wouldn't be a, a real support. It will recompense the success, right? You ha well, you, it won't be a real support. What I think what needs to happen is just, there has to be a certain amount of regulation for people like me. If I had an emblem that said I had followed, taken a course that was allocated by the government or I had followed certain steps we must include, I don't know, whatever, whatever credentials we could come up with. Let's say we have to include uh, so many business posts, so many this posts or that post. So we would have, if, if I could, I, it would help me if you regulated me so that people could trust me even further. So that's important. C'est important, this, this part, cet aspect. Merci. Merci. Ça répond aux questions. Merci. Okay. Nous allons poursuivre la période d'échange avec la députée de Westmount saint louis La parole oui. est à vous. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Rhonda, we only have 20 minutes, 10 minutes, so we're going to have to go fast. Okay. Um, uh, I think first and foremost, I want to thank you for the local media coverage in the face of Uh, a real crisis in receiving local media, local news, what you provide is a vital resource. And so when we're talking about the future and, and the viability of the future, I do think that there is something to be said about exactly what you're doing because you've already adapted your model. And you're not alone, uh, collègues. Je vous invite à lire les commentaires qu'on reçoit sur le greffier, entre autres <coughs> un qui a été déposé juste hier par Pierre-Olivier Bédard de Longueuil. Uh, je ne les repas en entier, mais il dit j'aimerais que les blogs spécialisés soient pris en compte dans les travaux de la commission. Ce ne sont pas que les médias imprimés généralistes qui doivent rivaliser avec Facebook et autres. Il faut permettre aux petits joueurs d'avoir accès aux programmes qui seront développés. Principalement, les aides devraient cibler ceux qui touchent directement à la création du contenu, comme les frais d'hébergement de sites web, les noms de domaines, etc. So really, exactly in line with what you're saying. So I think one of the things that would be beneficial for the, uh, our commission to understand is how do you compare to other media outlets? Um, I'm going to show you, actually. I did these, this big thing in case we had technical difficulties. So I'm going to show you exactly how I compare. Um, where are you? Of course you're not there. I compare, I can actually say I compare... Um, quite well. During the flood itself, I had 275,000 interactions on my site, whereas um, other local media had less. I don't know if I'm allowed to say names of other medias, but the, lar the big guys, the big boys, were struggling to keep up with me. So it's, um, as you can see here, you can see here I had, we had a great success during that time, and how we compare to other media. Can you see that? No. Can you see that? Here. We have Montreal Gazette at 368,000 during that month. We have Global at 83,000, CJD at 122, a West Island blog at 214. And the local newspapers, the Suburban had 2,000. And Jewel 106 local radio station had 3,000. So different, on, different, different groups had different. You absolutely can. Would we, would we, I, I brought you all a copy. Okay. So okay. it, it's it, we do we do compare um, we are in you're, line. You're, you're out there with the you're with the big players. We are. Okay. We're we're not treated as a big player because we're not accredited. But in, in part, I know we were talking a lot about advertising models. Your advertising model is actually quite particular. Can you share a little bit on, on how Absolutely. it works for you for your blog? The most important thing that I do is video blogging, is is the videos which will. Um, When you're in a business, I go show off your business. I show off your whatever you're doing. Recently, I did, uh, I did one post on a business that is doing a new app for geohistory uh, learning. 5,000 people. Like, that's how, that's how you're going you're gonna to want me to do that for your business in the area. So everybody knows. If I eat somewhere and I post what I'm eating, generally people are interested. My, my team does the same. But you have a social, social clause. 
with your advertisers, do you not? I do have a social clause. Any partner, any serious partner that's coming onto the blog does in fact have to participate in a fundraising or a community aspect. They have to involve, implicate. I don't want just a partner that's going to put a, a sign and leave. You have to get engaged in the community and help. Okay. You know, we're talking a lot about future of advertising and there are some questions about should you be eligible. What's your definition of journalism, a journalist? And do you feel that you qualify? I do feel that I'm qualified. I'm, I, I think the... I think journalism today is, is, yes, we need our courses, we need to be educated and so on, but it's reporting factual, honest information and making sure it's nonpartisan. That, to me, is what a, journalist, a journalistic person should do. I've been trained by, uh, by my mentor, and he trained me very carefully in the fact that we had to have both sides of the coin. It was very, it was very specific training, so I do believe that I do qualify as a journalist. One of the things that we were talking about um, with other uh, individuals that have come here, partnerships, what we're going to be doing to help those local communities and the local news stay vital. What's your vision of partnerships? I welcome partnerships. I really do welcome a partnership. I had no idea that this was going to happen to me. I didn't know it was going to be so viral. And a partnership with maybe a, a large, one of the big boys again. If one of the big boys decided... Uh, that I could handle their local coverage, I would be more than welcome to partner because, like I said, I didn't really realize this was going to happen. And now I have a certain aspect of social responsibility to use the blog for good. Mm -hmm. it, it's not, and, it, and it's unfortunate that I named it a blog because I didn't know it was, it, was, it was supposed to be personal when I started it five years ago, but it's not personal anymore. It doesn't belong to me anymore. It belongs to the community that it's serving. So talking about the community, how do the municipalities benefit from the news that you report on and you provide to the community? The, municipal, the municipalities use me often to, if there's, a, if there's something that needs to be said or done quickly, oftentimes I've got more reach and I've got a global reach, whereas the cities have their particular reach. So I reach the entire area region as opposed to a municipality that would reach only their area or their city. So in a crisis, I, in, in the last flood, I was called on to um, orchestrate the volunteers. And uh, do, do they advertise on your uh, on Two your cities blog? already do, yes. I'm very proud of that, to be honest. Because you have to be nonpartisan to get... You, you're not going to get somebody to advertise on your site if you're bashing people here and there. There's no... I cannot... There can be no emotions in my reporting. Zero. It's not Rhonda's opinion that matters at all. What's the um, average age of the visitors that come to your site? Do you have that? Originally, it was 35 to 65, and now it's spread to the 18-year-olds. We're starting at 18 now to 65, hmm. and we have we do have a range up to 70. Uh, that's very interesting because I know one of the things that you mentioned was and you've got an, a youth component. You have a lot of uh, young uh, reporters. So uh, uh, my colleague wants call, uh, a pépinière, right? So uh, you've got your own pépinière that maybe you're starting. Um, but a concern that many members here around the table have, and rightfully so, is reaching our seniors. Uh, we want to make sure that we're working against isolation and reaching out to them. Do you have a plan for that as well? I don't have a specific plan for seniors, but that partnership you were discussing would, would help me solve that problem. I think unified, I think if we were unified in general, it would, it would help uh, reach the seniors. Maybe we could do that through a printed version, maybe a once a month printed version so that everybody's up to date. It, it's more difficult to print from my perspective. I have absolutely no knowledge of print, so it would be difficult, but if I partnered up with somebody that did, mm -hmm. that would be great. You mentioned earlier that your revenue stream isn't one where you could uh, support a family, for example, and you said that you have a lot of volunteers coming to help you. Um, if you, Would you give any consideration to adapting your business models so that you would be eligible for funding, for example, from the Secretariat? Um, because the service that you provide, again, is in part the future. You are open to partnerships. Is that something that would be a viable conversation to have with you? I think so, yes. I think, I think we could massage this. I'm, comp I'm willing to compromise. I'm in a learning process myself, as we all are, because it's a brand new way of delivering news. Mm -hmm. And it is, seems to be the way that people are receiving it. 500,000 people checked in with me during the flood, so it's vital. How we proceed forward, I'm open, because, like I said, we're all learning here. It's new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
in your experience with other people that are doing a similar type of news media as what you're doing, do you think that they would benefit from being part of a registry for advertisers? Again, one of the things, if you've been paying attention a bit to the commission that's been presented here is that um, to make sure that there's an equitable balance of government advertising to make sure that it gets out to the community. We've talked about this famous 4% that uh, we don't seem to be able to achieve. Is that something that you think that you could benefit from as well and partner with? Yes, I do. And then you have to look at the people like me. We have, it's, it's self-employed. We have no pension. We have no, no insurance. We have no, we have no way of doing that. Even if I was receiving all the, all my ads, I don't think I would still be able to manage that kind of thing. So yes, it, it's definitely something to consider for us. We talked a lot about the social impact, mm -hmm. about the news that you provide. What do you think the social impact would be if um, the blog was gone? Because now you've expanded, right? You're not just West Island, you're Montreal. You've got uh, El Sepehi in Laval now, right? So you've really expanded your model. What do you think is the social impact of the demise of what you're doing because it's no longer financially feasible for you to continue? I think it would be detrimental to my community. I think it's now, now, in, now we're entrenched and people are looking to us for this as a resource. I think um, if it was gone, do I think somebody else might do it? Possibly. But if it's not viable for me, it's not going to be viable for them. And we're going to, I think democracy is, is in jeopardy here. We need to have our, our voices heard. People need to be spoken to and issues need to be addressed. And people need, I will be interviewing every federal candidate. So my, my readers need to know who, I'm very, it's very important that they vote. And it's very important that they know who they're voting for. I don't, I don't uh, believe in voting for somebody I don't know. And I feel it's my personal job to get them every single interview and meet every single person. Merci, so. Madame Massan. Alors, je cède la parole au député de Rimouski pour 2 minutes 30 secondes. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Bonjour. Bonjour. Vous avez l'air d'être une femme en symbiose avec votre communauté. Oui. Euh, et je pense que c'est ça qui est, qui est beau à voir dans ce que vous avez présenté tantôt. Mais vous considérez-vous comme blogueuse, journaliste ou influenceuse? Je suis journaliste, euh, c'est sûr. C'est... C'est dommage que j'ai appelé le, le West Island Blog au lieu de West Island News. Euh, C'est dommage, mais je ne savais pas ce que je faisais dans le temps. Alors, euh, on, est, on est là pour changer le nom. Ce n'est pas vraiment euh, efficace. Okay. Parce qu'il y a des règles dans le, dans le milieu journalistique. Là. Le mm -hmm. CRTC, euh, tu pars un journal, tu as des règles. Le gouvernement te demande de faire des déclarations, de des règles. Comment on peut régler... Euh, Régir ou donner certaines règles avant de subventionner ou de donner des crédits d'impôt à un blog ou quelque chose comme ce que vous faites. Parce qu'il peut y en avoir dans différents domaines. Il peut y en avoir, vous, vous êtes très proche de votre communauté, mais il peut y en avoir dans le sport sur différentes choses. Il peut y en avoir d'idées de, 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 politiques d'extrême. Il peut y avoir n'importe quoi là, là, un peu là-dedans. Comment le gouvernement peut trouver une façon de supporter ça avec des règles, puis surtout si on pense d'achat de publicité? Un journal, dans mon opinion, il y a une, une, une section lifestyle, il y a une section sport, il y a une section... Et, et la section lifestyle, c'est probablement... Et éditorial, c'est la seule place, c'est les opinions sont bienvenues. Alors, un journal, pour moi, c'est des informations non-partisanes qui, qui sont claires, nettes et factuelles. Pour donner un, 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 un sub, une subvention à quelqu'un qui est une blogueuse traditionnelle, c'est leurs opinions, c'est pas ça que... C'est là la différence. C'est là la différence. Okay. Euh, un, journal, un journaliste, puis je l'ai compris tantôt, puis il y a plusieurs qui l'ont dit aussi, là, vous dites, il faut être neutre, on ne pas être partisan, il ne faut pas que je dise quelque chose de méchant contre le maire si, euh, si je veux être... En même temps, c'est un peu le rôle du journaliste aussi. Si le maire fait des affaires tout croche, il faut, faut le dire. Ça, c'est un fait, fait, par exemple, c'est pas une opinion. Mais le maire pas Ça, c'est pas mon problème à moi. Okay. Si on, on, si je, moi, je suis... C'est pour être sûr d'avoir les faits. Si les faits sont là, c'est les faits sont là. Tu as, as porté une, une chandail rouge, tu as porté une chandail vert. Ça, c'est les faits. Mais... Mon opinion, c'est que je n'aime pas le vert. Ça, c'est ça, ça, pas, pas de... Pas de euh, place dans, la, dans les informations. Okay, c'est une ligne éditoriale, mais c'est votre ligne à vous. Oui. Comme blogueur, ben, oui. blogueur journaliste. Un blogueur, c'est... Le blog, c'est votre opinion. C'est là qu'il peut être difficile pour le gouvernement de trouver la ligne, comment on peut sou euh, soutenir ce genre de média-là. Mais c'est vrai que c'est... 
C'est moderne, c'est aujourd'hui, il faudrait y réfléchir. Merci, Vous monsieur. quelque chose de nouveau. Merci, Merci. monsieur le député. Alors, je cède la parole à la députée de Marie-Victorin pour deux minutes. Merci beaucoup. C'est très impressionnant ce que vous faites. Même, vous avez eu plus d'engagement sur les réseaux sociaux au final que les autres médias quand on analyse ça, donc bravo. Euh, lorsque, dans votre mémoire, vous écrivez à la... Je pense que c'est à la dernière page, oui. oui. Vous dites « Les organismes gouvernementaux doivent réglementer le montant des frais facturés pour pousser une publication sur les médias sociaux. Euh, » Qu'est-ce que vous voulez dire par là? Que vous pensez Parce, doit... Présentement, oui. le Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, il y a un frais si je veux booster mon, mon, oui. mes annonces, mes, mes posts. Si ça arrive à un, à un certain point que ces frais sont très élevés, ça sera... Ce n'est pas bon pour la démocratie parce que c'est la seule façon qu'on qu dirige les nouvelles. Dans l'ancien temps, il y avait un, un, petit, euh, un petit jeune qui livrait les, les papiers, les journaux. Aujourd'hui, c'est Facebook qui a... Qui a not, nos nouvelles sont dans les mains de Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Si jamais on nous charge, la démocratie est finie. Est leurs, est, tout à coup, c'est eux autres qui décident. Quoi c'est valide et quoi n'est pas valide. En termes d'algorithme, vous voulez dire si Facebook et tous les autres réseaux sociaux changent les algorithmes oui. de sorte à ce que ça soit encore plus difficile pour les médias Déjà, de percer sans payer. Exact. Ce que vous dire. Déjà, ouais. si je ne booste pas, je n'ai pas la même, la, la même uh, reach. Mm -hmm. Alors, si ce n'est pas correct dans le sens des nouvelles. Mm -hmm. Parce que tout le monde a le droit d'avoir les nouvelles. Oui, c'est intéressant ce que vous nous dites parce que vous êtes la première à, à l'avancer parce que souvent on met en, rela en compétition en fait les publicités dans les différents médias traditionnels et les publicités sur les réseaux sociaux. Et beaucoup de gens vont dire que c'est peut-être plus attractif de faire la publicité sur les réseaux sociaux parce qu'à l'heure actuelle, c'est moins cher. Mais au final, sur les réseaux sociaux, ce que vous avancez, c'est que c'est pas tant de la publicité que vous concevez les réseaux sociaux comme étant un, un canal de distribution, comme l'était avant les réseaux de oui. Camelot, par exemple. Merci. C'est intéressant. Merci, euh, merci, Madame la députée. Alors, merci, Madame Massad, euh, pour votre contribution aux travaux. Nous allons suspendre quelques instants le temps de changer de représentant. Merci.